I've had so many questions about housing, and it's something that you guys have all uh, sort of mentioned, I think, mostly today. So um, in, in one question, I'll do my best to try and wrap those questions uh, together, which is simply, what will you do about housing in Palmerston North, given that house prices continue to reach record highs and rents are, in the words of a couple of people, out of control. Uh, also, can you tell us how much property you own or um, is in a trust in your name? Sharon. Resource consent. To me, there's so much red tape, so many hoops that people have to jump through to actually even come up with innovation and new ways of housing people. So I think that's a key. There seems to be, not a cartel, but there seems to be different agreements in the timber and housing, housing uh, sector where they are feeding into each other and, and keeping the smaller innovative players out. I am a part owner of Hyden Manor Estate. I was an owner of it in 2000, and then it sold and we bought it, rebought it back in 2017. At this point in time, we are innovating. 95% of our students came up from overseas. We start an online course on Monday. Innovation in the face of the recession and what's happening, I feel, is critical. And innovation and new styles of housing and cutting the red tape so it can happen is vital. William Woods. As I mentioned earlier on today, housing is my number one passion. It's where I would be if I wasn't here today. I'm working on making sure that our community has uh, support. What many governments have failed to do is look at housing holistically and only chosen to pull one of the levers available to them. What National will do in Palmerston North is pull every lever we have available to us. So that's making sure we invest in public housing. That is giving our community housing providers the support that they need to get houses built, who have the knowledge and understanding of building houses in our city. And that is repealing and replacing the Resource Management Act with an Environmental Standards Act and a Building Construction Act to unlock investment into our sector. The Labor Party has seen firsthand that the Resource Management Act, in terms of Kiwi Build, strangles development and stops it from going ahead. What we saw in the last national government is houses which were earthquake prone and condemned were destroyed and sold off to community housing providers. And I heard an incredible story just the other day of homes for people putting four or five houses on an old section that had absolutely um, no livable stands in it. So pulling all the levers we can and investing in our community. Uh, do you own any property, William? Oh, no, I don't, unsurprisingly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed, I like the rhetorical William, but I do remember when state houses were pulled down by the last national government, and it's, and the first, the first house that was being built in Palmerston North was the first one built in 25 years, so we have to actually remember that when we talk about housing. The things that the Greens want to do, we've got our Homes for All package, go to the website, check it out, there's a lot of detail. We want to stimulate a not-for-profit sector to make sure that um, there are other options for people who are looking, stepping into homes and housing. We want to work with iwi, we want to work with uh, housing providers, um, and we also uh, we also want to encourage uh, more progressive ownership because we know that that is one of the ways that people step into home ownership as well. Um, there, and we also want to uh, build on build on the work in the Residential Tenancies Act around putting more protections around uh, uh, to making sure that people in communities can build deep roots into that community. Kia ora. Uh, do you own property as well, Tiana? Oh. <laughs> yes, me and my wife own our house. David Popperwell. <clears throat> Housing is one of the very, very basic needs in this country. The reason we don't have enough houses is, quite frankly, we've never kept up with the demand. The demands coming in from immigration and demands that we also have from within. One of the problems is also the RMA. We want to get rid of the RMA. We want to look at first world countries, look at building materials, if there are materials that have stood up to the task and we can bring them into the country. If we don't have an adequate supply locally, that's what we want to do. We also want to look at uh, partnerships. It could be partnerships with in people. We look at partnerships like rent to buy schemes, different ways. We want to have a myriad of different ways. One thing we also want to do is the various home builders, for example, if, uh, um, Acme Homes, for example, have 28 designs on their books. Once the council has approved those, that's it. It's approved. 
the next person that comes along and buys it doesn't need approval from the council, it's already approved. We've got to look at new and innovative ways to house the population. New Conservative is for that. And do you own property, David? I saw the last one. I'm coming to live in your back room. No, I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> Tang Yu Takeri. Look, I've spent the last seven years chairing the council's hearings committee, so I completely understand that the RMA is a complex beast. What Labor has done is sought to tweak that over the last three years, so there is some actual movement in terms of the, in terms of the consenting process. What we've also done is progressed a national policy statement around urban development, which sends a signal, a very strong signal and directive to councils in terms of freeing up land and making urban development more affordable, more easy, in line with the long-term projections for the city. And for us, that's on a medium-term basis. Not only that, in terms of, um, as, as has already been said, state housing, the delivery of the first one in 25 years, and also the proposal that actually Palmerston North will get its fair share of 18,000 new state houses by uh, 2024. 20, Not here in Palmerston North, but our share of that. In terms of do I own property, um, one residential property in partnership um, with my partner. Anthony Williams. Well, most of it's been said, but uh, <laughs> what's interesting is that Manawatu has been playing catch-up uh, like the rest of the country with our housing stock. What's also interesting is that I don't necessarily believe that the RMA should be scrapped. It does need to be reformed in certain areas. I also believe that there's a variety of other issues that Palmy has been having, everything from boundary issues to changes and requirements of where uh, housing needs to be put, etc. Uh, one of the big things is that we are playing catch up with the, with the state housing system and the housing stock in that area. What I also have noticed though is that there's an awful lot of housing being built out towards Whakaronga. Uh, and they, we're in process, of course, of as quickly as possible moving into different types of partnerships that also was being echoed by other candidates here tonight. So, thank you. And Jack Phillips. I do not own property. I am currently renting. Um, okay, kia ora, everybody. So on the ACT website, we have a wonderful policy called the Freedom to Build, um, and that covers everything from repealing or replacing the RMA uh, and getting building regulations um, for similar locations, such as uh, Japan, um, to make planning um, and stability uh, easier for both builders and buyers. Um, in terms of councils, um, man, they have it hard currently with the RMA. They cannot free up enough land to, z to zone. Um, we just want to repeal and replace it. That's, that's all ACT ever wants. So that's it for me. I see no feverish waving for a right of reply. William? Try and keep it as brief as possible. I'll keep it very brief. Um, I just wanted to address something that was brought up by Tianu. Um, one of these horrible groups that brought up unfit state housing was Tatihi, which have built homes for five far now here in town. One of the horrible groups that brought up state housing under the last government was Homes for People, which have built tens of homes for people in our city. The plan under the last government was to support our community housing providers, and yes, we made a mistake, absolutely. We should have been investing more in housing. That is why I promise you here today, my number one focus as your MP for Palms North will be to get houses built and to get our city homes, because it is not appropriate in a developed country and in a wealthy nation that we have children going to school from hotels. Sean Lyon. Quite often housing is talked in conjunction with immigration. One of the things that I'm very concerned about is that there are houses land banked that are empty. I hope to be proved wrong that there are 30,000 empty houses in New Zealand owned by overseas people. If they were cleared out, if we could have a law change that alters some of that and also allows them to be perhaps rented. There are various ways we need to look at the overall picture. I'm concerned about that. Uh, one of the 